So we're two and a half years into this pandemic at yeah. this point, right? Yeah. So I don't think there's any question probably that anybody uh, or someone you know has already had COVID and or you know somebody who does if you haven't had it yourself. Yeah, but here's a question. Do you know anyone who's managed to never get sick? They're known as super dodgers, and scientists want to find them. To explain what this is and tell us what super antibodies are out there, <laughs> our senior correspondent, health correspondent Monica Robbins, showing just now. We knew you'd have the answer for this. You know, those asymptomatic people, don't you just, <laughs> oh. They, but they, asymptomatic doesn't mean you didn't have it, right? You might have not have ever known. Thank you. Boy, that's a great segue into my Is story. it? All right, yeah. take it away. It's <laughs> good. Oh, all right. According to track test results, about 95 million Americans have had COVID, but you can bet that number is a lot higher thanks to those who were asymptomatic or never even knew they had it. Right, Christy? So how do those people seem to get by without even a sniffle? Well, researchers at UC San Francisco think they found the answer. They found a genetic mutation that doesn't prevent the virus from infecting cells. It does something better. It prevents a person from having COVID symptoms. The mutation in the HLA gene helps a person clear COVID, get this, 10 times faster so the body never even develops symptoms and once that happens their immune system is armed and ready to fight off any other COVID infection that might come along later. Now it's a common mutation believe it or not about one in five people who are asymptomatic have it. The next phase is studying those folks to figure out the details of why. How do they get away with this? In other promising COVID news, though, researchers at Boston Children's Hospital developed an antibody that can neutralize all of the currently known COVID variants, including Omicron. So as of now, it's still in mice models, but this is very important news because those monoclonal antibody treatments that they were giving to people who were at high risk to, who contracted COVID, like the diabetics and the cancer patients, well, the treatments are significant significantly less effective now that COVID has mutated so many times. So this might actually help develop newer versions of those treatments and may help with future vaccines as well. Wow. Okay. Can we jump back to the, the Super Dodgers for a moment here? Because I'm wondering, have there been other mutations that have kept people from getting sick? Believe it or not, yeah, there are some like superhumans out there. Of course, the most famous are the people who had the mutations that protected them against HIV, but there are also mutations that prevent people from getting norovirus, and there's one that prevents symptoms of a particular type of malaria. All right, let's go back to the COVID front for just a second. There's so many shots out there. It's like planes lining up at LaGuardia <laughs> or something like that. Sure. You got the COVID shot, you got the flu shot, you got shingles, et cetera, et cetera. Is there a timetable as to when folks should get shots? Actually, no. Okay. Well, sort of, kind of. All right, so yes and no. It kind of depends on the individual, actually. So if you are an adult who has no issues or side effects with vaccines in general, you can actually get your COVID flu, shingles, pneumonia shots all at once if you prefer. However, if you're someone who've had, who's had an uncomfortable reaction, such as feeling like the flu symptoms with the COVID vaccine, or you just hate needles and you don't mind multiple visits, well, you might talk to your doctor about spreading them out. Tip Typically, shingles and COVID are the ones that have the strongest side effects. There is one shot, though, you cannot get with the COVID booster. There is one exception to the rule, and that is for the monkeypox vaccine. We generally advise patients to wait two weeks after receiving their monkeypox vaccine before they get their COVID booster. So the reason is that both shots have a low risk of myo, uh, myocarditis or heart inflammation. So it's just wise to spread those out. And according to the CDC, ideally everybody should get their flu shot by the end of October. Health agencies, as you've seen, are pushing people to at least get COVID and flu together. One reason people are less likely to make to appointments. There's another issue though, timing. There's always this push this time of year to get the flu and now COVID boosters, but efficacy does wane over time. So you want to get your shot shortly before flu or COVID season fires up. So best advice, if you're around vulnerable people, 
protect them by getting vaccinated. If you can wait, at least get your shots a couple of weeks before Thanksgiving to protect the family and keep tabs on cases in your community. That is really important because everybody forgets, you know, we keep tabs on flu cases and obviously we keep tabs on COVID cases now. So just pay attention to that. When you see cases going up, if you haven't been vaccinated, then it's time to go. I feel like we've been talking about adults here and, and what we should do. But what about kids in yeah. terms of how many shots they can have? Because that's an issue for a lot of parents. Absolutely. And, but if you think about it, you know, when it, when a kid goes for their regular vaccines, they're yeah. typically given in one a one shot dose. They're getting three different types of vaccines. But here's the thing. Talk to your pediatrician. Generally, though, yes, kids can get COVID and flu together. They already get multiple shots in a single visit for regular vaccines. However, it also depends on the child's age and the types of vaccines that they need. So bottom line, talk to your pediatrician. Yeah, a lot of good information, Monica. As always, thank you. Thank you.